All right, so today we're going to be talk. well, I'm going to be talking, not so much you guys, so um, I'm going to be talking about powering content-driven applications with WordPress. Uh, first, talk about who am I. Um, I'm a senior software developer at the Walt Disney Company. Um, I have a couple, I have a course on lynda.com, about to hopefully be a couple more. Um, I also teach at calderalearn.com. Uh, I've been on a couple podcasts of the Adventures in Angular, as well as JavaScript Jabber. Um, I do blog myself and podcast a little bit on the WP crowd. You can catch my shirt, uh, as well as my own website. So I'm everywhere. Uh, if you need to find me, RoyBoy789. So what are we going to cover today? Uh, WordPress, seriously? Um, so I'm going to talk about why you guys should be building with WordPress, um, cats, and how to build with WordPress. So the cats part actually originates from a talk I gave in Montreal a couple years back. I convinced a bunch of speakers to put cats in their slides. And we had a contest going, who could put the most cats in their slides without being detrimental to their presentation? And I put like 50 bucks in Amazon gift cards on the line. And it's been going on ever since. It's just been a thing I do. So I will ask if you guys can count how many cats are in my slides and just tweet at Royboy789 how many cats you've seen in my presentation. Yep. All right, let's talk about WordPress. Um, you know it's the most popular CMS out there right now. Uh, it's basically used on a huge part of the internet. And I'm curious, does anyone here actually use WordPress in some capacity right now professionally? Awesome, cool. Um, Grumpy Cat used to say I used Drupal once, but then I met some Drupal people here, so I had to change that slide. So why do you want to build with WordPress? Uh, according to uh, W3 Techs, it's used by 27% of the internet plus right now. So it's pretty much everywhere and it's still growing. And to be honest, it's not just the bottom 5% of websites anymore. It's not like your mom and pop's grandma's blog site. You know, it's really coming up as a CMS that people are using for enterprise, for platforms, for applications. Um, people like TechCrunch, Facebook, and Mercedes-Benz use uh, WordPress to power their websites. There are even websites built in a galaxy far, far away that use WordPress. I know what you guys are thinking, right? Star Wars, it's pretty cool. All right, so first I want to talk about some concerns that I face in the enterprise realm or I hear from enterprise developers why not to use WordPress. There's no LTS, it's an open source platform. And question, how many updates are there per year? Um, I was gonna talk about all of these, but then I realized you guys are Angular people. Don't these kind of look familiar to some of you? There's a correlation there. I know Angular, the LTS was announced yesterday during the keynote, which is awesome. Um, so that's definitely a plus for me in helping my cause pushing Angular. But ultimately, hate is gonna hate. So. Just realize that today, in, in today's world of tech, there's basically a solution for every single obstacle that's out there, um, whether it's the open source part or anything else. So let's talk about some of the benefits of using WordPress. I know building a CMS is like a rite of passage for all of us developers. Like, you are not a true developer if you've not built a CMS in your life. Like, that's just like one of those stepping stones. But do you really want to build a CMS why not use a CMS that's already out there that so many people already use? There's plenty of code, uh, tutorials, and it's super extendable. Um, and you can be a lazy developer in the process, right? You don't have to build your own CMS. And by lazy, I mean efficient. Uh, use a CMS that's already out there, use a CMS that's proven, and keep on doing what you actually want to be doing. I know I've just convinced all of you who don't use WordPress to use WordPress, but if not, internet.org is a WordPress website. And if the internet can use WordPress, so can you. So let's talk about how. So now that I've convinced you to use WordPress, you're wondering, okay, how do I use it to actually build out my cool Angular applications? Well. WordPress now has this cool thing, a REST API. 
It's been in core for a little bit, but as of 4.7, which is a couple cycles old already, it's now completely built into core. So out of the box of WordPress, you get a RESTful API to interact with the WordPress content that you have, and the data is pretty sweet. Check out that sweet, sweet JSON. So this is an example of something that the API would send back to your uh, application when you do a GET request. This is one particular blog post. Um, it gives you the ID, the title, the URL, and everything else you need. It's pretty cool out of the box. If you do have posts or you have pages, there's URLs for it. So let's talk about what you get out of the box just by installing WordPress. WPJSON, or essentially domain.com slash WP-JSON, is the prefix for all routes for the API. When you do WP slash V2, that's the namespace for all the default routes that come out of the box. Here's some of those examples. You get slash posts, you get slash pages, you get slash comments, et cetera, et cetera. There's a couple more that I didn't list off, but you get the point. There's a bunch of stuff that is out there that kind of just, again, comes built into the out of the box. And if you just go to WP or WP-JSON slash WP V2, you'll actually see a whole list of all the routes that you have uh, available to you. The great thing about the WordPress REST API, it makes route discovery super simple. So you can take a lot of the uh, uh, stuff that you have hard-coded maybe, like assuming assumptions in your code, and let the uh, API tell you what API routes are available to you and what data you need to pass into those. Those are all available uh, out of the box, and then um, it's pretty cool. You can do a lot of cool stuff with it. So what if you wanted to spice it up a little bit? The cool thing about the API, it's highly extendable. Basically, you can do a lot of customized stuff to it. I'm not gonna go too much into the customization code, but if for whatever reason you have blog posts or a page and you wanted to add extra data to it, it's pretty simple. So I'm gonna show you an example of that. I really wanted to add tacos to my uh, response. I was like, Man, you know what I need in all my blog posts? I need tacos. So I decided to actually just hook into the default route uh, that spits out the post data, and I added in tacos. So look, I get a happy taco every time I get a post. Incidentally, when I was doing these slides, they said, hey, you should have a black background with in, essentially an inverted from what I'm usually looking at. Do you know what tacos look like when they're inverted? They're really freaking creepy. Just thought I'd point that out. All right, so the real power of the WordPress REST API really comes into play when you want to build out your own API. Custom routes. So we know I've shown you kind of high level what comes out of the box, but what if you want to do something completely different and completely unique? Well, that's where this comes in handy. You actually define yourself a new namespace. You define a route and a callback. And then you return essentially an object, a WP REST response object, and that's all you need. All of a sudden, you have your own API to work with. So for example, out of the box on the right, you see the default namespaces. I told you before, WP slash V2. And OEmbed is another namespace that comes out of the box. On the, my left, your right, these are namespaces out of a WordPress website that I have running. And essentially what happens is people are, who build plugins can now add in their own namespaces, and now plugins can give you API data, right? So Yoast is a very popular SEO plugin for the WordPress realm. They have their own API now. Um, EDD is a e-commerce for digital content. It has its own API. Uh, Caldera is forms, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're building out a custom application, you kind of want your own API, and you want to do it versioned. The great thing about the version of the namespace is that should you need to add in or upgrade your application in the future, and you have maybe multiple, uh, multiple applications running off the same data, you can say, okay, well, this data is going to run off v1, this one's going to run on v2, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really helpful to have uh, your version in the namespace, and then your whole API is now kind of underneath that namespace, and it's completely decoupled from the default API, which at that point you can almost just turn off if you don't need it, if you only want custom data. 
Um, so let's do some examples. Here's a custom route. Um, it's not the prettiest code. I prefer to put this in the classes and stuff, but uh, this is PHP. Um, basically, you just tie into a init function and say, I want to define a new route. My route is going to be fp-custom v1 namespace, right? So I don't think I have a, no, can't see it. All right, fp-custom v1 namespace. Uh, VRE purchase is the actual route. And then I have methods, so I only want this one route to take on post requests. The callback is there, so it's actually uh, another method within the same class. And then arguments that I need to pass to this is going, are going to be product ID. So um, this is for a product uh, API endpoint. Um, and I said the product ID, because I need, I need it in my callback function, uh, I'm going to say required equals true. So basically, when there is a post request to my namespace slash route, it, if the product ID is not existent in the, in the uh, headers, send it back and say it's missing. So this is kind of like allowing you to do some pre-check of what the data is coming in and allows you to actually clean up the code on the callback function. So callback function. It's a really, really simple example. Basically, it just all it does is takes the rest request. Uh, I get all the parameters, uh, spits it out as an array. Um, I then just return that, and then I return the response. So if I were to post, right, if I was doing an HTTP post request to my new custom endpoint, all I'd get in return is the same exact data I just sent it. So really simple example. Really good way to test if your endpoint's working, uh, if you don't want to do like unit testing or anything like that. Just a simple way to get up and running and say, hey, my endpoint works. Um, really, really simple, and, uh, and it's easy. Like, we, get, uh, we get up and running with our APIs pretty quickly because it's so easy. So let's talk about some use cases for this. Uh, Ionic and NativeScript native apps. So, there's actually a plugin for the, in the WordPress ecosystem called AppPressor. And AppPressor takes, uh, it's built on Ionic, and it allows you to take your WordPress data and create a native app with Ionic. Um, it's pretty cool, and it's really easy to just use out of the box. Um, but most of you guys are way more advanced than that. So just use Ionic directly, or NativeScript, or anything else that you want to use. Um, the WP Crowd, we have a great tutorial series on NativeScript and WordPress. So if you want to check that out, a uh, good place to look at. Um, decoupled applications, which is, I think, the coolest thing about this whole thing. Um, forget WordPress themes and all that. Have a WordPress website. Let your marketing team, let your non-tech team handle all the content. Doesn't need a theme. It could be blank if you actually go to anything. But you power an application built on a completely different stack using the content from that, CM, from that WordPress site. You can also create a decoupled app that interacts with that WordPress site. So if you wanted to create a custom uh, micro CMS or you want to do something with the data in WordPress but not actually have someone log into the CMS, you could actually do that really quickly because, again, it's completely restful. It takes all the default crud, um, and it's, you could keep it completely decoupled. And then micro widgets. So in the past, if you wanted, let's say, a feed from a WordPress site into another website, you would catch the feed, uh, the RSS feed, right? And nowadays, that's kind of useless, because who wants to deal with all that stuff when you have a wonderful API? Uh, micro widgets are kind of a cool new thing. Um, I deal a lot with micro widgets in the MySpace, just, uh, just to create cool little UI widgets within WordPress, right? Like, so on my website, I have you know, my speaking engagements, my portfolio, and like my GitHub projects are all custom post types within WordPress. And it's all filterable through a little Angular, uh, Angular app that I have just to showcase what it can do within a WordPress ecosystem. Um, it's one way to look at it. I really like looking at it as using WordPress as a decoupled outside of the ecosystem kind of thing and allowing for you to actually build whatever it is you want to build um, in the languages you want to build them in, but having the WordPress CMS just be a great backend because the UI is there and everything's good to go. Okay, but seriously, I'm still talking about WordPress. Um, WordPress isn't your grandma's blog CMS anymore. I think I've covered that. RESTful API is easy to customize and add to. Um, check. 
Uh, and you can still build what you want with the code you want. So again, use a CMS that everyone knows and loves. Keep the overhead of learning a new CMS down. Don't build a new CMS. And you can still do what you want. You're not, you're not going to be chained into the WordPress ecosystem just because you have it on the back end. So I have some awesome resources for you guys. Uh, check out lynda.com. You can find me or Morton Rand Hendrickson as the other big WordPress guy. Um, I'm hopefully going to be doing a couple more talks about or courses on there with uh, WordPress and uh, Angular because uh, the one that's on there is one, so I want to up update it. Um, Caldera Learn, we have some awesome YouTube videos on there. Um, we, have done a f we actually have a free series that's on YouTube that's taking apart WordPress and JavaScript frameworks, so Angular, React, and Vue. Um, the API docs for WordPress are awesome. Uh, there's great code examples on there. Uh, take a look at them. They're a great place to just copy, paste, and start you know, on your way. Obviously, they're very low level. And if you liked this conference, if you are at ng-conf and you love it, check out loopconf. Loopconf is actually a developer conference focused on the WordPress realm. It's run by a lot of the same people ng-conf is. Um, and we talk a lot about the API and building out really cool custom decoupled applications with it. A lot of the speakers at loopconf are, that's all they do. And a lot of them are actually core contributors to the API. Um, I think there's potentially going to be another one this year that's really cool. Definitely check it out. The WPCrowd.com, that's my blog and podcast. Um, we do a lot of this kind of high-end stuff, talking about building all sorts of stuff with the REST API. Um, so that's it. That's all I have to talk about. <laughs>